The topic, David Bakhtiari. The question, what makes him such a monster? Let's just get into it. One of the things that I think is so fantastic about Bakayari is his combination of, you know, he has great hands, and then he's really strong. He's a really difficult guy to bull rush against, and this play is a good example of that. That's who he's going to be going up against, number 90 right there, uh, uh, who's to his left. Uh, so basically, the way a bull rush works is that, you know, for a defensive player, you get your hands uh, on the offensive player's chest area, and you just push. It's, you know, a, a play that largely uses strength to your advantage. You're not really too concerned about too much else. You're just, it's a lot about strength. And like, watch the Kansas City player, you know, he starts to push uh, right at the beginning. But what you're going to see Bakayari do here is that he has his arms and he has them sort of to the outside. He has kind of on the shoulder pad area. And once he can get that hand placement, he's good. And he does a tremendous job of getting the hand placement. And what makes this hand placement so good is that once he has it, he's just strong enough that he's not going to really push, uh, allow you to push him around. You're not going to be strong enough to push Bakayari around. And so at this point, once he gets the hand placement he wants, uh, the play is basically over. And as you see, he basically just stops 90 in his tracks right there. The only way to get pressure on Bakayari is to disrupt his hands because he's so strong. But his hands are so good, he's so difficult to disrupt, which is what makes him such an effective player. And he doesn't even need perfect hand placement. He just needs, you know, something that he can work with. Like on this play, uh, he's going up one-on-one -on -one right there on the left side of the screen. Uh, and what's going to be really unique uh, on this play, I think, is that, you know, when the ball is snapped, he doesn't necessarily get his right arm exactly, excuse me, his left arm exactly where he wants. His left arm is very far extended. Uh, he doesn't have too much power under it. It's kind of in the same spot, but he has to p get a lot further to, to do it. And it's kind of reaching out. And obviously, you can't push when your arm is fully extended. On top of this, 92 can do a good job at this point of knocking that arm away. And again, the left arm is usually the most important one. The outside arm, when you're making a move to the outside, uh, usually you have to try and knock that uh, arm away. That's what you try to do. And so the fact that he's, you know, Bakayari doesn't have necessarily tremendous grip on that is usually a good thing. However, Bakayari is so strong even with really the only grip he has on his right hand, he's still able to push 92 all the way behind Rodgers to where there was never going to be a sack on that play. He's also someone who is just very aware of his surroundings. Uh, you'll see what I mean on this play, going up one-on-one -on -one against 90 there for Detroit. Uh, and, you know, listen, there's not a lot of ways you can beat Bakayari. He has such good hands, such good lateral movement, and is so strong, trying to get to the outside. It's not a great idea. So I understand uh, if you necessarily might say, you know what, I don't think I totally want to get over in that direction. So 490 of the Lions right here, he's going to say, screw getting to the outside. I'm going to make a move and try to get to the inside. It makes some sense. So what you see him do is he fakes as though he's going to the outside, but he grabs both of Bakayari's arms, and he's going to try to yank Bakayari to the, the right side of the screen and get to the inside. You'll see this happen relatively often. Usually, it's uh, you see it the other way around where you try to get to the outside this way, but I think it actually makes a good amount of sense to do it this way. The move itself is called a pull club, and that's what he's trying to do here, uh, but what's interesting here is that 74, the guard, he's not blocking anybody. So this isn't really something you can necessarily pull off uh, in this situation. So while this move might actually be a decent way to beat Bakayari, you have to pick your spot well. Because as he tries to get to the inside, 74 just completely levels him. Uh, and, and that's kind of the thing where it's like, yeah, every now and then you can maybe try to find a way to beat Bakayari. But even if you do, he's aware enough to realize what's going on and not allow you to beat him. And just to be clear, if I'm not being clear about his awareness, is that he was fully aware that his guard uh, had finished off his block, pushed it over to the center, and was free. So he wasn't as worried about pressure going to that side because he knew he had a teammate. Uh, and uh, so that's why he wasn't quite as worried. Uh, again, I think that you might still be able to beat him that way. That might be the one way to beat him. But with Rodgers' ability to get outside the pocket, giving up containment uh, by going to an in the inside, it's not something you can do too often. So uh, the fact that that's his only one way to potentially beat him, that's his weak spot. Far from the end of the world. I want to show one more strength play just because I think it's awesome. Uh, I know I've already talked about it a little bit, but I wanted to show one more. 
um, on this play, going up one on one. And I'm just going to play this out in real time. I just kind of want you to see, uh, you know, even when an opposing player has a running start and gets the hand placement they want. Uh, watch Bakayari, and again, watch how lateral he gets. Watch how like diagonal he is, uh, and just able to make that stop. He's just so strong. He's a he's a wall. You can't get through him, uh, and you can't get around him either. He's a moving wall. It's he's so difficult to get around, and he's such a luxury for Green Bay to have. In an in an age where there aren't that many great tackles, he is truly a great tackle. I think I could show an entire video of plays from Bakayari of just other guys screwing up of just other guys overthinking things and taking themselves out of the play while trying to solve the puzzle that is 69 of the Green Bay Packers. I won't do that. I'll only uh, show one example, but this will be the example of uh, going up one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on the left side of the screen. I don't know why I really need to feel like, I feel like you guys know what I'm talking about. Do I really have to keep doing the graphics at the beginning? Eh, it makes things easier to follow, so I do it because also sometimes the camera angle flips. So uh, anyways, uh, going up one-on-one -on -one against uh, what's going on right there, uh, and basically what the Detroit defender going up against him is going to do is he's going to try to uh, just get to the outside. He's going to try to do a swipe move, swipes away Bakiari's left hand, gets to that side, gets through, and gets to Rodgers for a sack. That's the hope here. And so, like, as you see, once the ball is snapped, uh, that's what he's doing. He gets to the outside. Uh, Bakiari already moved a little bit further over in that direction because he's being prepared. Uh, but, you know, okay, he's saying, okay, that's fine. I don't care. I'm still going to try to get over there. Swipe, get around. Uh, but he, all he does is just continues running, and Bakayari is able to stay right with him. Again, this kind of thing could maybe work against a slower tackle, but Bakayari isn't just a strong guy who can't push anyone around or can't move around. You know, he's someone who can push someone around and he can move, uh, which is what makes him an elite left tackle. Honestly, I, I think the Packers have a lot of greatness on their offensive line. Uh, you know, I really like Jenkins, who uh, sort of came into his own uh, as the second round rookie last year. Uh, they have a lot of talent, even with losing uh, their starting right tackle, Bulaga, uh, in free agency. I still think they have a lot of talent, but it definitely all starts with the left tackle. And hey, if you're going to have one position to have your best player at, uh, left tackle, not a bad position. And I'm talking on the offensive line, although you could argue for the whole team, which is saying something considering the fact that they have Aaron Rodgers. But yeah, anyways, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.